Okay, great. So again, welcome back uh, to the challenge walkthrough. So as usual, I want to start with anyone else who uh, has and should. Uh, you should have read, read the challenge document by now. And so let's start by anyone willing to explain what they understood or what they don't understand. So both are, I am very, I will be very happy if people do one of them or both of them at the same time. So that means one part is what whatever you understood or what question you have or whatever you don't understand. So, okay, Abraham, Abraham. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so uh, I was able to look at the <clears throat> the challenge document a bit, uh, though I did not understand much. Uh, related to uh, earlier and uh, also now, I see that we will be working on prompt engineering and uh, in, uh, improving that prompt engineering. Uh, it basically shows a few things about RAG, which is a new concept. I have uh, been able to try to prepare some resources for my readings. But what I wanted to show now was uh, uh, previously on the previous standup, I saw that uh, certificate generation was a bit issue even last week. So I just wanted to share how uh, I generated my certificate and it, it was it was pretty much uh, the way I wanted it to be. And I just wanted to share that, if that's OK. I wanted to share the prompt engineering. Go, go for it. That. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Are you going to share your screen? Yeah. Can can you see it? Yeah, it's, it's coming. Yeah. yeah. We can see it now. OK. So uh, generating an, a good certificate was very challenging. So after several efforts, I just tried to understand how the the machine was generating, the AI was generating the the, the prompt I was giving it. So I just simply came to uh, this kind of prompt. So I said, design a simple certificate that has light cream color as a base background and has no words written because it just kept generating uh, random words on the certificate that was very kind of disturbing. So after several efforts, I came to uh, this kind of certificate. And I also added uh, used CV2 to add, uh, add to add the details. Can you see it? Yeah, we can see it. That was that's excellent. I think uh, better certificate definitely highly controlled. Yeah. So I just wanted to share uh, the prompt engineering I just brought to this, to this. So I, I believe on this week we'll be more working more on uh, improving the prompt engineering and automating that. Yeah. So I'm and, and in, including so right now that you have just s scratched the surface, right? But beyond that is where you can control probably many details, like whether you want that kind of leaf or that this leaf or you know many of the number of things, as well as. Um, I think using masks and others to also be able to generate and have variations uh, according to some test, right? So I think there is a lot. I mean, so this is one aspect on image. But if you want to create now video, what happens, right? You want to be able to control the narrative of change, not only one aspect of it, but even just the aspect of the change. You know, if you want to animate this, how do you create it? If you want to create a GIF. Right, so that's where it's just, this is just control is the first part, but driving is another thing. Right? It's like getting what you want is, yeah. So that's Apparently, excellent. Just to add, even the, once I just created the the initial part, uh, when I tried variations, it, it completely took it out of my control and it drove yeah. somewhere. So I, I hope exactly. that 
we'll be working on that this week. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, good. It is a good segue to the discussion. So wonderful. Thank you. But also earlier you mentioned like you didn't understand much, but normally when you don't understand, that has no help. It doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help any you make sure to articulate a few questions at least from th anything you don't understand get a question because a statement that is like i don't understand or it's new for me it communicates something but only communicates useful stuff if it follows up by for example this question for example this so that's a way of kind of getting the most out of one single statement of like uh, I, this is new for me or I don't understand but if it's just only full stop there it basically know that it is it has no information in a sense it doesn't tell me for example it tells me like you don't understand but I don't know how deep you understand you don't understand versus how shallow you don't understand maybe you just don't, don't understand one thing maybe you don't understand everything so but to help us understand I mean this is for everyone it's not only for Abraham make sure to always articulate a, have a question a specific question a general statement is a date statement. It, it doesn't help anyone. So make sure general question, general things follow up by specific things. Like I don't understand, for example, most of the things in, in, in the challenge. For example, I don't understand why 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 we need to evaluate this. And something like you know, specific. Almost always be, make it this one your habit. Um, and and practice it all the time. So Abraham, can you try what, to articulate one question at least, what you don't understand? Oh, sure. Uh, I have noted what you mean. I understand uh, exactly what you meant. So I'll better prepare for the next time. For this time, I, I think what I didn't uh, really comprehend was uh, how it was possible to... It, the, the title to mentioned prompt tuning for building enterprise. And so using the RAG system, so what basically is, what is the RAG system? That would be my first excellent, question. Excellent, excellent. So that now helps, right? So that so RAG is basically um, retrieval, R is for retrieval, A is for argumentation, and G is for generation. So retrieve uh, or retrieval argumented generation, right? And what it is, is it solves one key problem of um, chat GPT or in this case, actually every LLM. And how does it do that? I mean, there are many variations of RAG, but a very part is that if you think of what the LLM, in this case, OpenAI GPT is trained on, it's trained on a tremendous number of, you know, amount of information, right? But that information has been, for example, if it was trained two years ago, the information they collected was probably up to that time. But normally, even it's not like that. It's even they collect info like by the time they were training. For example, if the training finished in um, like let's say 2022 June, probably the data preparation was actually completed in December of 2021, right? So that means there is a, an information gap on the world that happened after that. The LLM has no idea if you tell it, you know, how is the current conflict between uh you know like let's say israel and palestinian is going you know it doesn't know it has no information about that because the state of the world it is not it, it is no pattern things you know new things happen for example new technologies has happened maybe python has been upgraded from you know 3.10 to 3.12 and then in 3.12 that something may have a breaking change may have happened so now so many of things the LLM doesn't know and doesn't understand, as, as you as you know, LLM only as good as its data. So it will still give you an answer, but it will give an answer that actually it makes up. It has no information, but it, it's called hallucination. Now, and also it doesn't know so many things about some enterprise, for example, OpenAI's data doesn't know anything about, for example, the some Ministry of peace in Ethiopia or in, in Kenya, for example, some internal data. So how do how can they use the power of OpenAI to be able to use that as a model, as an engine, so and then extract or answer some questions or do something with the data at hand? 
Of course, the usual way is called fine tuning. So you you take that one and you fine tune the model. But that's that you know that LLMs, OpenAI has trained these things on thousands of GPUs, and you know there's no way that a Ministry of Peace or somebody that would uh, be able to do that. And the the knowledge and everything is not so. Rag is this part where because prompts are so at the heart of it is a prompt and because prompts are what drives the gpt it's called in context learning it uses that to learn to kind of go so in context learning means actually the llm learns even from your prompt to give to give you the answer you want so that's why different prompts tells it how to differently go and generate so because at the heart of it is prompt but now in that prompt, you can inject your knowledge. And that is called, um, you know, context. Now, how do you get that context what you want? And that's called retrieval. So that means you have to retrieve that context what you want for the question that you are asking, put together on this prompt and create a bigger prompt and send it to the LLM. And LLM now doing the in-context learning, that means while it, from the prompt it learns and uses its its basically you know it's as if like you are giving someone saying like okay this person it's a lawyer has no it doesn't know the case about this new crime or this new defense uh, part but by telling him right there at the court what happens and if you ask that that lawyer how to defend the person would create right there the better version of defense than if you were just basically say like okay you know and um, uh, defend this person and the person and the, this person doesn't have that context so it's the same as llm in the prompt you give it that context and then the llm then of course that's called you retrieve that context the relevant context for this um, um for the part for the question and then put together and give it to the llm llm then from the context and the question gives you an answer and that's called rag so it generates so the generation the ultimate part is the answer so that's basically a rag is system now in each of them that I say, there is a retrieval. So that means from the question, you have to retrieve the relevant context. And usually you do that from uh, vector databases because semantically, you, you, it's not only by keyword. If, it, if you are selecting the context from keyword, you could have just done a normal, you know, um, let's say a Postgres. You can just do some filter by, I don't know, some, some keyword. But in this case, the retrieval component becomes big because you don't want to just for that question, which is a natural language, you want to select the actual, um, you know, contexts or ideas, concepts that are similar to this. And that is called a semantic search. Semantic search means one thing. So basically there is a retrieval component. Now, after you retrieve and after, and you have the question already, the user question, you argument them. Like that means you create a, a proper prompt or a, a good prompt. And then, of course, the generation means from that prompt, you the LLM generates. And then this cycle, a number of things are involved and in, in tuning that is the, the project. So hopefully, Abraham, now you got some idea what RAG is. RAG is that a three combination, but it's a cycle just like L, you know, um, ELT or ETL. You know, it's, it's just is a framework. But of course, the combination you know, doing so many of it again in diagonizing in a cycle or in, in a thing is what ELT or ETL is in data engineering that big. RAG is for now a framework for uh, getting what you want from LLM and um, using question and answer type, or that means enriched version. So does that make does that make sense? Does it address at least your question, Abraham? Yeah, yeah, it most certainly does. Okay, Thank great. You. Okay, Abdulhamid. Okay, so I had one question regarding the uh, context in which the uh, uh, LLM has. So with OpenAI, especially I think GPT-4, yeah. there is a uh, search for the, in the internet. I think there is a plugin that does searching from the internet and brings data which is which the model hasn't been trained on. So my question is, if the uh, LLM can search the internet, uh, wouldn't that be a better route? Uh, okay. no no how does it search you know just simply just llm it's, it's not the llm that searches but uh there is probably a plugin that helps you to search but that plugin you can create it yourself it's called 
you know, you have a Flask or a Fast API endpoint that that uh, then uh, the LLM functions or whatever just that's running calls that one with a title and basically it's search. So any agents usually agents are called that. So basically, you know, LLM doesn't provide. I mean, uh, OpenAI doesn't provide that. At, so they have two things. One is called code interpreter, and the code interpreter basically is basically a sandbox that runs a code that's generated by you know by the GPT. And so you can actually use that to be able to generate code run and like that. But that one also is in sandbox. That means it doesn't connect the internet, but it can return back to you um, so to run some function or to call something. And you can actually call, for example, it tells you, you give it like, okay, you have these types of tools. You have Google search, you have Bing search, you have you know these types of API you can call and you have also like a calculator, you have this, you have that, right? You tell it what tools it has, and then it generates. So basically in the generation, it means it's just outputs the text saying, call this function with this argument. Then you execute on behalf of the LLM and then return back the answer. And then the LLM, analyzes that answer and again it might want to call another function for example now okay i want to calculate something can you do this thing on that calculator again it's telling you in text and then you do on behalf of that you, you use the calculator because you you gave it that he, uh, the llm has a tool to call and then you do a number of things if you do this continuously automatic that's called an agent right so an agent it does exactly that way it handles all all types of things right so but it's still the context, I mean, the agent can try to find its own context via the internet. But it might be useful for some things, like if it's like about news and stuff that are on public. But if it's about your code, your data, for example, you want to answer, if a user answers, asks like, what services do you give? You know, maybe you want to use your the company's knowledge base, you know, about, for example, internal use. Maybe you, you, you can give more context about the internal hidden component right maybe you don't share with it but something like that so does that make sense uh, like, yes uh, just, yes okay, okay. so yes. yes it's one tool calling the internet and searching would help in some other so it's you can call it that one as part of rag but in that in that sense it's called i mean i i have the, some of the list the references there's called retrievals retrievals it's one part of, this is one part of retrieval that you actually retrieve from the internet, but you can retrieve from many things, um, including a computation. Okay, Melat. Okay, so I understand what RAG actually means and stuff, but I have a question on the retrieval part. So uh, when the user enters this uh, text message, that, the, the text message for the LLM, uh, I mean, we're, are we supposed to take, I mean, how are we supposed to do the, the co extraction of this context thing? Uh, what does that, what does exactly mean by uh, giving the context to the, uh, to the database, to the vector yeah. database? Are we going yeah. to grab the entire data from the input and give it to the database? Or I don't yeah. know what that means. So this is a good question. So this is called a vector, you know, vector database or semantic search. So imagine if it was a normal, let's imagine, let's do it from the old time, right? Which is basically keyword search. All search based search engines used to do um, keyword search. That means you type something. So if I am typing, um, you know, ME, and if the database search is a recommending based on keyword, then the next, anything that has starts with ME will start recommending for me, right? Um, so let's imagine it's mail at and it's on user first name is melat uh, table then i would go and search like okay give me everything about so because maybe the user wants to know about melat's profile right so then in this case you would go in the database and collect from the user what melat's uh, the row for melat and then um, if it is a database connection you would join it with a profile table and then you get everything that basically becomes Melat's kind of profile, right? If it's about Melat's many other data, I would join, I would create that one, and then that's it. Now, so that's an structured 
normal database. But what about if a user asks like, um, okay, now it doesn't mention by name Mailat, it wants to know about who is the, let's imagine you are uh, an, the lead of some an IT company, and who is the, basically the CTO of uh, this company? I mean, in, uh, of course, because you have now, you can search the keyword CTO, and you might just go to like a table if there is called roles, then you go to CTO and that. But that's, you know, you, you can imagine now already if the person doesn't say CTO, but instead says, um, you know, the chief technology officer or the officer, the technology officer, now you know more, you have to pass this data to actually go to, to understand even which table to go, whether it's the, you know, the role table or the user table, because it didn't mention about Melat or it didn't mention about CTO. So this is called, like, you can imagine this one, this is even a simple case, but you can imagine a lot more conversations. So for example, earlier, it, it was mentioning about the CTO. Now it says like, okay, what does this person do? Now, what is this referring to? Now we get into the realm of basically language parsing and you know large language model do well. And that's called semantic understanding. That means what is this relates? Is it about Melat or is it about something else, right? So now that part, so now you understood the problem. It's no more the usual data research. Keyword search doesn't help. So you have to now semantic because semantic means it's embedding. So you embed, ultimately GPTs are embedding, embedding machines, right? They embed something. Even when you give them the, uh, actually the text, the prompt, they embed first that into some number space and then they compute that, that number space because they multiply something, something and generate a word. And then that through the embedding, you translate whatever they gave you into, into words. So here is the same. So if a, when a user asks question, you take their question, you embed it. It's basically embed means you create a vector vector um, of dimension and n dimension, whatever the language model supports. Now, because they are now number and vectors, then you can use calculus basically be between vector similarity. Because whatever context or knowledge base or that you had already also, you embedded them by chunking them into a certain form. It could be sentence by sentence. You did chunk and vectorize your data before, or it could be page by page. Let's imagine you had page by page um, that, or whatever document you had, you, you take page by page and you embed them and, and then put them into this database called in this case, vector database, because the, the database not only has your data, but also has the vector, the embedding vector. That's why it's called vector database. Now. What you want is that you have now the vector of, and imagine in your company there is like, let's say one, everything is a page and there is about 1 million pages of document in your company. That can be anything, code, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever you have, documentation, every written thing that you have, the legal part, the law part, the thing part, everything. So let's say 1 million pages. Now a person is asking about like, you know, what, who is the, the chief technical officer of this company? Now. You have to select in which page do you get this information? Because now it's page by page, the question is embedded, each page is embedded. Now, when you select the closest, it's vector similarity is just that, that's mathematics. So you choose the closest Im embedding between the two, that means, and then you select, let's say page, uh, maybe eight, eight pages. So the first page is page 10, the, the second page is like page thousand and the other one is something. Now you expect that's the context because the question and these pages are similar in vector space. And hopefully that means semantically they are closer. And that's what the innovation of LLMs are. So that means now you get these three things, you put them as, as, as a context. And then the LLM knowing this context, most likely maybe page 10 is where actually it's written who is the chief uh, technical officer and what they do and who that person is, uh, something like that. Does that make sense, Mela? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay, great. And who can then also tell us about this week's project, the challenge of men? Or questions I, from your reading?
Okay, Rudolf. Yeah. So uh, I, I I would tell what I have understood from that week project. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. First of all, uh, there is a challenge. Uh, that challenge is what, uh, because uh, LLM have been trained with the uh, general data. Uh, companies uh, are not uh, or industries are not really using the power of LLM because uh, they have the personal data. So this is where the the challenge come from and uh, prompts promptly tech have seen this challenge and provide uh, a solution and uh, the solution is to, to provide the AI, uh, AI driving solution for uh, optimizing the, 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 the usage of LLM so for to achieve that the the proposed to, uh, the proposed to to save time to come the proposal three three uh, services uh, the first one is a uh, uh, prompt automatic prompt generation uh, where they they provide a uh, an effect an effective prompt to those company based on the the person data and they help them to save time. Uh, even uh, even though they, they, they do not have expertise in uh, uh, in uh, crafting prompt manual, uh, they, they, they still have uh, a good answer, good content. Uh, and the second service they provide also is um, uh, automatic test case generation, where they did they did uh, they identify issue and did some tests to make sure that uh, their response they are giving are accurate. And the the third one is a uh, you know, it is prompt testing and ranking, and and the the uh, I don't I don't I don't I don't remember uh, too much the. The understanding of that service. Uh, anyway, uh, so basically, for for what I have understood from that broad uh, for that broad idea of uh, for that broad project is when the in the uh, in term of uh, uh, workflow, the company maybe having his data. Uh, maybe uh, uh, let us assume that it is in, in, in form of a PDF. So that PDF maybe uh, will be embedded uh, by OpenAI to convert, uh, you know, uh, once it is embedded, it will be installed in a database. And from your understanding, that database uh, will be called vector database. And when the user, uh, provide a prompt now uh, the uh, the search will combine the prompt and what is uh, in the database um, plus uh, LLM to provide uh, a, con uh, a contextual uh, I mean uh, a personal or uh, a customized relevant content to the user black. So this is what I have understood from that project. Um, yeah. No, I mean, it's so you explain rag absolutely correct. So it's correct. Uh, but the, the, the challenge this week even is demanding more. It is not about only it's about I mean, it's actually, it's not that it's actually solving the different problems exist there. So in, in theory, all that is said is correct. Yes, you have a context, you select the user something asks, and then the LLM, you know, you select the context, you, you send it to the LLM, and the LLM returns back the answer, happy life. That is the, the theory. In practice, 
every single part of that area needs to be fine-tuned because the user might be asking something not right right and it is about your task to get all of this into like solve the practical problem of it especially at when you are trying to do some something like that at enterprise enterprise means normally you can think of it it's reliable it's predictable um, and that is the most important part and to do that you need of course to do so many things and you know the rest is correct i mean the understanding the general understanding is correct but solving each pieces in that area is what is the current week challenge so i think what rudolf said and what i explained earlier within the rank system there are pieces components first is retrieval second is argumentation third is generation and all of them need to be optimized including you know your first when you put into data vector database how you put the in the first place the document needs to be optimized and many many other things need to be opti optimized to get exactly the theoretical assumption that means you get you basically satisfy your you have a reliable system and a predictable system it doesn't answer something that you don't want i mean you have seen some part of i mean rag nana is rag right so nana that in in slack is rag nana gets you know whatever link you use you put it actually takes that input that HTML, you know whatever link it parses that one and puts it into a, a vector database and next time you ask it actually uses that information but you have seen it so many and you gave it everything about the challenge document for example this week and you know for every week and all about 10 academies rules and regulations we have given it everything that we have as so and then it almost always when you ask it decides whether which context to use whether it's using the actual context we gave it which is part of 10 academy challenge whatever or the internet in this case so or whatever just the llm knows so it chooses it in you know classifies and gets the context and if the context is about the week challenge it tells you about oh, okay this week's challenge is this or that so but you have seen it also so many times when you say thank you to another person it it answer it, it thinks it's for itself right and there are so many other reasons why sometimes nana a little bit you know okay like please stop nana and then it will still answer something and that part is the practical component you have seen nana again and again and again and sometimes when it does really amazing stuff and sometimes when it does something silly stuff right it is like you say good morning and we we, we didn't we didn't want it to answer good morning but it still answers because it's not our control and every time in the back end we're trying to create for example abel is tasked with this and he's almost always trying to improve it what you are solving is exactly that type of problem but now at enterprise imagine we are we are trying but at enterprise at google is going to be responsible for its own chatbot and if it does something that it doesn't expect people would feel like oh, google is not good so when you are building for enterprise great rug there are things that you need to understand and that is the this week's challenge does that does that make sense is that clear and Magdas, I think I do, I, it would be nice if you can also ask the question. I didn't answer it because I didn't understand it. So could you ask your question in light of this new information if it, if it doesn't answer your question? And as always, yeah, uh, I am... Yeah, go on, Rudolf, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, first of all, uh, Thank you for giving me this uh, explanation because it helped me to get more uh, what we we are going to do. Uh, after your explanation, uh, there is the keyword I didn't really understand is the grade. Uh, why do do we call grade rag? The grade uh, enterprise grade. So enterprise grade means. Uh, it just means at enterprise level. That means, you know, if you are building for okay. some startup, that 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 is, you know, the startup can tolerate some errors and stuff. But if it's enterprise grade, then you know it has to be, it has to have very very stable. It has to be stable. Yeah, is that does that address? 
Yes, yes. Is that thank you? Okay. Yeah, Great. exactly. And, and let's, yeah, and let's, everyone else, let's make it clear. Don't get away from, from this meeting without understanding exactly what each piece are. You would be doing injustice if you do that. So if something is not clear, ask it. And so I would be very much encouraging you. If, if you understand it, great, I'm happy. If you don't understand it, make sure to ask. So with that, I mean, you can all the time raise your hands, but I'm just gonna go through then basically what, um, yeah, what the, basically just going through every part. So this is um, actually you have to know the project challenge of this week is initiated from a company, a startup that actually just currently got funded about 4 million, but it's actually raising also next series B for exactly the same project that they have done. So, and um, that company is called uh, Promptly or something, we'll share that. And maybe it's just inside one of the references. Basically, they got evaluated high just for doing this part. And we thought one of the role we have is that sometimes when we find something interesting um, and we know that you can do it, what we do is we give you the opportunity for you to start even your own business following this, right? So this is the currently the hottest topic. Um, and doing this well allows you to get hired very quickly or as well as also to be able to create your own spin-off uh, out of it. So there is a lot of doing it well has um, a much advantage. Okay, so in this case, we just coined this new, uh, you, whatever you're going to establish, you might be the one who is establishing this startup called Promptly Tech, uh, is an innovative e-business specializing in providing AI-driven solutions for optimizing the use of language, language models. So basically, the, what it wants is making the technology more accessible, efficient, and effective. And uh, it, it wants to do that by uh, solving the challenge on prompt engineering. Um, and that's basically, it's basically to improve customer experience across various industries. So it's not, it's not a particular industry only, but a general solution that allows uh, this thing, you know, that prompt engineering to work in different contexts, whether it is, let's say, email marketing, whether it is ad uh, advertisement, whether it is just uh, crafting, um, you know, some reports, whether it's whatever it is, right? So for whatever technology and industry, it wants to have uh, some very build uh, system that tunes prompts, okay? So um, so basically that is the case. And the company focus on key service, automatic prompt generation, which means now crafting a prompt, I think earlier Abraham was showing us when he does something, it, it gave him what he wants and others you have seen it, they were struggling to get what they want. So that part is kind of how can instead of like generating that yourself and you state what you want and you get an automatically generated prompt that 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 gives you, provides you what, you know, a prompt that you can use to get, for example, in this case, a certificate that you want to say like, okay, I am designing a certificate. It's not a prompt. It's much more a desire. You specify more of first a desire. Uh, I want to get this, I want to get that, and it should look like this or it should look like that. And now this automatic prompt generator takes that one, your desire, and gives back um, a, a prompt that you can send to the LLM to, to do, to generate what you want, right? So that's called automatic prompt generation. So you give a description and a prompt is generated automatically, and that prompt is optimized to, to deliver, you know, highest quality. The other part is, of course, to do that, it needs to be automatic test case generation. It basically means like, uh, you, like it, uh, it, you know, it's, um, so it's basically to try to generate data to test your, this automatic prompt generated ones, how good they are, right? So it's basically, that's called evaluation data. And basically now, given that you would have multiple prompts you have to generate, to compare and contrast. So of course you need to discriminate what is good against what is not good. Of course you have already the test data, but the prompt testing and ranking, what ranking do you use? Because you know, ranking, it seems like, oh, you know, the, your desire is already specified, not in a good way, like it's already vague. 
So of course the data tells you, the data is also may not be accurate, like because yeah, it's, you just generate some data. And so you need to really have an algorithm to compare and contrast and, and kind of rank prompts as well. So those three areas are the, the key areas. Automatic prompt generation, given some description and stuff for a general sense. And the other one is generating automatic data generation or evaluation data sets. And the other one is given those two to, to have an algorithm that com, you know, basically ranks prompts according to their, let's say, fitness. And that fitness is basically a, an algorithm, whether it's like, you know, and this or that. Okay. All right. Hopefully that's clear. And ask question if that's not clear. And these are all whatever I said is explained here. And the background context is also just, I think uh, you can read it. I don't have to repeat. Um, I see questions. So, was uh, Fanwen? And then you can, you can go. I, I was not seeing any questions on the text. So, um, now I can answer as well. But Fanwen, you can proceed. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I don't really get the test case part. Like, are we supposed to generate an evaluation for the prompt ranking, or is this something else? It's not clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will come that uh, to answer Binia Majao. Like you asked about how are we going to embed dynamic web content into a vector database? What? Well, like, yeah. Uh, if it has to, it has to. But, you know, you have to drop your previous knowledge of what the space and whatever constraint in the LLM space, whatever is a content, it's a content. It's if that is a context you want to answer, whether it's the whole code, and it doesn't need to be even the 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 content. It can be the whole code, the whole deployment pipeline thing, the entire text that you have in the database, and everything. If it is a context, then it's just will be there. A code is is a context, a content is a context, uh, an image is a context, a video is a context, and even including your, um, let's say, um, if it is, if you are an architect and you have like the entire software, if th that is necessary, that's a context too. Nothing. Like, so don't think of small, like, oh, this or that. It's a context is a context. What? So think about it. Everything is a context. The computer, everything for a computer is zero and one so for a computer everything is a context every zero and one whether it's a software whether it's a, an image a video um, even a connection even the design pattern of the ram can be a context so you know that feeling of like being constrained by the usual thinking you have to get away from it does that make sense Binium? Because I want to, and I think that's a very good question, and um, and it's important to trans, you know, transition from that, you know, basically piecemeal way of thinking, where like you have a code which is very different from a text, which is different from an image, which is different from. It's called multimodal. In the multimodal sense, everything, everything is defined by a pattern, and that pattern, if it is, if that you want it to be a context, of course, selecting a context, what is a context, is fine, but. Even a software is a context, you know, anything is a context. The internet is a context. So let, let you not worry about what, just only worry what is my context, not about like the pieces or the formats of the context, because ultimately you can, as I said, you can provide the zeros and ones itself. Even a, a new language that, that is just you devise can be a context. It, it does, it's basically a pattern is all that is. Hopefully that is very clear for everyone. Okay, and um, and then now I'll ask. I don't understand when you say similarity. What is the input compared with when doing cosine similarity? So it's very similar. Like um, so, in vector space, so that's mathematics. That's why we demand a little bit of mathematics. You know calculus. In calculus, basically, in x y z plane, you know it's called an x y plane. In x y plane, for example, in a coordinate, um, a longitude and latitude. Basically, two numbers which are vectors. So basically, from an origin, it's in a vector space. So like between, you know, like a, like a, 
longitude and latitude goes in y, let's say longitude in x latitude from zero to 360 and from zero to 360. And in that space, the everything in the world will be now in, in that space, right? A point in that space is basically a coordinate. Now, if you have a point there. Now you have another point. It's called point A and point B. Now, what is the distance between them? It's a constant, you know, whatever similarity. Because now you, you draw a vector in that space one and you draw another vector on like to B. And then you basically say, what is the angle between them? If the angle is zero, they are the same point. If the angle is not zero, then they are different. How far that angle tells how similar they are. If it's small, they are similar. If it's not small, they are not similar. So that is exactly the case. Now, in this is in in for longitude and latitude, you have only two coordinates. Fine, you know, very, very, you know, the whole earth can be defined by longitude and latitude. A text cannot be defined by two such things. So that's why LLMs have sometimes a vector dimension of 8,000 or another 50,000, maybe 100,000. The vector space, earlier we said two numbers. In this case, it might be, you know, 1,000 numbers that defines one point. So every sentence you have is transformed into one point in this coordinate. Okay. So that means, so the whole book or a single word are the same for it. If you embed it, embed means you transform it into a single point. So that's why the chunking, you know, you can chunk, you can embed a whole book as one point, or you can chunk that book into pages. Let's say if it has a thousand page, you then each page you embed it. That means you transform this one book instead of as one point, you transfer it as 1000 point. If you now define it sentence by sentence, and this book has 1 million sentences, it means that you embed this book into a million points right so it's up to you how you embed but that's basically that every point everything you embed whether a sentence um a, a page a paragraph or a book or the entire internet as one it doesn't matter if you embed it when you embed it as one point it's one single point in that coordinate and a question is one single point in that coordinate so a single question uh, if you embed it as one, it basically is a single point. Now, there is a single point here and a single point, many single points in your context, you are selecting using vector similarity, uh, cosine similarity or other metrics. You define what are the similar ones. That's called semantic search. Does that make sense now? Because this is key com component as well, and it should be clear. Any response in one form or another? Okay. So um, then, um, Vanuel, you asked about, I think, remind me, sorry, I I, I missed, uh, forgot while explaining the others. Uh, yeah, go I on. asked about the test case. Yeah, and the test case. So whenever, whenever you have, whenever, for example, you do anything, including classification, what do you do? You basically want to know you need to have a hand labeled thing, for example, for a classification so that you estimate how accurate was the algorithm, right? So in a machine learning context, you basically split your data into training, validation, and test case. And the test data set, ultimately, using the training, you train the model. Using the validation, you select the model that, that is giving good. And using the test data, you basically then estimate its performance. So the same is here. Now you have multiple way of generating your uh, prompts. And how do you compare them? Because they are each of each method, each strategy that you generate, the prompts are called algorithms. And so you have to have a validation set that allows you to validate, you know, because even if LLMs generate, you have to validate whether the prompts that you are generating in one strategy versus in another strategy, which one is better. So you need to generate exactly uh, a validation uh, data, evaluation data set, right? So that evaluation data set, you can use actually generate it from another LLM, you know? So it, it's called automatic generation of evaluation data because that, that way you will be able to test your prompts generating uh, matrix. 
and their performance. Does that make sense now? Yeah, it does. I think it does. OK. OK, then uh, Melat. <laughs> Um, okay, I was going to ask about uh, the first task, which is automatic prompt generation service. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you my understanding, and then you can yeah. correct me from it. So uh, what I understand is that we take an input from the users, and then we kind of sort of paraphrase it in a better way. Is that what it means? Um, that is one strategy. And so, you can imagine another strategy. Think now another strategy. What else can you do? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I, I'm I sure also you know. think, think about it. What, what do you do if I tell you what I need is? So you have to ask, um, you have to t interpret for me a uh, lawyer like to a lawyer or maybe another language. We speak the same language, let's say in Amharic, and I don't speak English. And then you want to translate the other one now. There is, you can be a direct translator. Earlier you mentioned is that you paraphrase, basically you translate. But another one is, you know, I tell you just my intent. I, I want to get in because, um, you know, I, I want to buy something, maybe just in, in something. And then you, maybe that you understand the culture in that person, like the person who speaks the English, and then you will explain, you will basically construct a new sentence, completely new that explains this person is um, there, you know, that he's come, he, he comes from Ethiopia and uh, he is uh, here for buying something and normally he doesn't speak English. So, you know, this and that, right? It's not, it's paraphrase, but also in this case, you are completely doing something else. Like that's one strategy. You're basically, it's, you understand the context, uh, what that person understands, you, you can translate just only the language, you can translate the culture, you can translate many other things. And if you are actually, if there are so many people doing that for you, you might have a template for that, how to translate. Basically, okay, you know, a person only needs to write what they want to buy and whatever. So you actually give them a, a, a template, what to, what to fill in a form. And then you have another strategy to translate that form into a you know, prompt. So yes, it's a type of paraphrasing, but there, it's not just a simple paraphrasing. It can be completely reconstructing, you know, um, from a template. So you might have a, you might generate some templates and you might generate, you know, from those templates. And okay, you can so think I've, of multiple, oh, multiple right. ways. Go on, no, no, go on. Okay, so after generating these templates, I'm, do, I'm gonna have to choose one of them and then give it to the LLM. Is it how the workflow is gonna be? No, but um, I, I think this is not just only for one part, right? That you are multiple cases. So, of course, you have to select in this case, let's imagine a strategy because if a user wants, so let's imagine just one single template. Now, your single template is one prompt generation way, is that, um, a, a user asks something, you identify the entities in that context. So for example, entities means, uh, does it have a name? Does it have a, a thing? Does it have, you know, what is the subject, the object and the verb, right? So, and you take that one and you almost always say, write a, a, a template that says, you are an AI assistant that uh, maybe the verb you use somewhere and the object you use somewhere and the subject you use somewhere. And basically, you generate that. Now, that means you are generating for any question. You have one strategy to decompose that question into subject, verb, and object. And then you use that into, you insert it into a template. And that is basically what you generate. Now, you can generate many, many, many for many questions and evaluate it if that is a good strategy. OK, thank you. OK, so it's clear. No? Yes. Yes. So it's basically you are coming up for automatic prompt optimization means you're coming up with strategies of template to generate a prompt from that. And there are, yeah, so there are many, 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 many ways to do even the templating using some other way. You know? So, but that's where you are going to read. That's why you're going to start. But the idea is exactly coming up with a strategy in that, in that aspect that should work in most of the time. Maybe 
maybe like for one, like let's say for creative part versus legal part. So you might say, uh, you know, if it's legal, do this type of template. If it is creative part, use this type of template. So even your strategy is actually creating multiple templates. One your one of your strategy could be multiple templates for multiple fields and selecting based on determining which um, which part you know which which uh, the question based from the question or from the context the user gives you you may determine which field it is and then you use another one and generate and then that's again one strategy so it's coming up with different strategies okay so alexander asked as we know llms are pre-trained model that trained from large generated so it's the way we need to incorporate ragin LLM. so as to customize as we need to incorporate information that's Yeah, it's basically that yeah, I assume Alexander, your question is answered by saying we are going to evaluate our strategy of generating and so each part is gener you know tested, right? One part is selecting context, the other part that basically is how we divide our information into chunks and, and embed them. That's one aspect. The other part is how we combine context and, and uh, questions, and the other part is which LLM model and you know how accurate they they are giving us that is also evaluated and then the overall uh, evaluation gives you how accurate that track is so it's basically that evaluation data sets you are doing just exactly to do that you know to estimate how accurate uh, they are so hopefully that is answered um okay so Brahan and then Rudolf um so let's start this and then you'll correct me. So we got we provide three services, right? Okay. So the first one is the user is gonna ask us yeah. about something, let's say, and then we're gonna give them a better prompt that they can use, right? So next step one, we're gonna generate yes. let's say test cases, right? So yeah. uh, if you yeah. if you go up to the doc the 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 first slide, the first page, I think. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean here. You mean or? Okay. So yeah. in second, we we do like automatic text case generation service. So in here, what we're gonna do is like, so we user is gonna give us his own uh, prompts, right? It's the text case generation is for the prompt, right? Yeah. So we generate test cases for that prompt. You can use this test that test kind of a thing. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, it, it is something like that. It's uh, yeah, exactly. So it can be, it might be step by step, but it, you might think of it as different services. So yes, you know, how do you generate, for example, uh, data sets to evaluate for a, you know, let's imagine customer service uh, questions about certain companies. So in okay, this case, so it's about generating. Uh, yeah, if it's QA for question and answer. Uh, okay. you generate some type of data like different okay. collection of so, data sets like questions and okay. answers so usually in the test case just let me answer it so that mm -hmm. you can continue uh, further so you have to have in this test case generation just like unit test or integration test encoding you need to have two or three components the first part is the ground truth the other part is the actual question and uh, and so those is it, it's called a label so without the ground truth, you might not, um, you know, you might it might not help the test data generation. So you have to generate, you have to simulate data, um, a question and a ground truth. If it's classification, a question and a class, you know, it's it's label things like that. Okay, go on now. Okay, you earlier you were talking about vector data, uh, vector spaces and vector database. So. We don't have a data set, which is a fixed data set. So will will we let the user to input that data set to us, or we just sure. where where do we get those data sets? I, I like, think it's let's say, you, you the user in it in their intent they tell you what mm -hmm. what they have. So in this case, you your first part is engaging with the user if they have the so basically in an automatic prompt generation, you assume like do will the user provide a context, and in this case, so. It, it also at each point you have to know so for example when you evaluate the retrieval component 
the retrieval component actually is much more about how to chunk, what type of retrieval is there, and you are generating, you know, you're creating, you're generating data sets to evaluate retrieval. So that means does the retrieval algorithm that you use, does it, for a question, does it retrieve the right context, you know, and, it, and how accurate can, because if you, for example, have like embedded as a, as a book, of course, it always just will return a very a big, uh, the whole book. In this case, your question is about a specific page. So that is not a good one. So it's basically you say the recall is very small and you know, it's not good. So you actually generate for the retrieval to select the retrieval one type of data set where accuracy is important. For example, does, does, the, does the actual uh, context that is retrieved, that, is it precise or is it just vague? You know, it, it may have an answer, but it's so much overwhelmed by other uh, contexts. In this case, you have a, a statistics that, that goes down or a statistics that goes up. So that's called the evaluation. So later we will come, like, we'll come back to it. So um, every part of the rag is tested. And the automatic prompt generation is the part that actually um, does in terms of like, when you send to the LLM, that's the generation component of it. But the, the test case generation or data set generation goes all the way from retrieval to um, uh, argumentation to um, generation. Okay. Yeah. Does that answer your question? No, but I hope I will get the answer over time. Yeah, you, you will get, uh, I assume that yeah, as we go on. So because of just time, sorry, Rudolf, I'm going to, if it's a question, you can ask and then I will answer it down. So go on, Rudolf. Okay. Uh, I, I was asking uh, uh, if we will uh, uh, use LM to generate the validation data and how can we be sure that it's not a hallucination? Yeah, that's exactly the point. So that's where that will be answered as well there. So there are many, many techniques. People talk about it. So we will, we will get back to that. So, so with that, so the background context and all that, um, will give you, and this is where the most important part. Um, so everything that I now you are asking, somehow when you do the task one, it gets easier. So really make sure to spend really, really good time, maybe even in group reading, whatever you can discuss. It doesn't matter for me. The most important part, understand these key components, exactly what Brahan you are saying understand the key components of an enterprise grade RAG system. You can ignore what an enterprise grade means here. It just means for me, uh, you know, a simple RAG, you can do it in two, three lines of code. But what makes an, you know, a RAG difficult is when you try to get what you want, you know? So just you, you, you already experience it. To generate an image, it's, it's simple. To generate an image you want is different. So that's what it means. So this, once really would give you a very comprehensive uh, understanding. You don't have to even read another thing. I'm sure you can you can watch video and other things. Things are, there's so much resource there, but I selected some that I think is comprehensive enough. So when you read this, you understand what RAG is and their, their components. Then understand the need for advanced prompt engineering in building enterprise grade RAG system. This is where diff, there are different techniques. For example, fine tuning you could do instead of RAG, or you can do some just only prompt. And when you understand this also, you also understand why you need to generate, um, why you need to work on advanced prompt engineering uh, part, which is basically part of the automatic uh, generate, uh, automatic prompt generating. And and there is one just I like you to think and reflect. So this this um, um, analytics Indian uh, blog. RAG is just a fancier prompt engineering. Read that. Do you agree with it? Like when you do that, you then understand what I mean. Then understand the need for evaluating the RAG components. So this is where you are asking, uh, you know, you know, which part of comp RAG component we are testing. Evaluating means testing everything. You know, uh, uh, retrieval, argumentation, and generation. So when you when you read the here, you you understand clearly. Um, brand what it means like you know which part we are talking about why we, we are generating and then also understand the tools and techniques to automatically generate rag evaluation data so there are some so you actually have to understand that so this will give you 
and then learn key packages to planning, building, testing, monitoring, and deploying enterprise grade run drug systems. So I think that's much more of I call it um, RAGOBS, but you know, it might, I'm sure if you search by RAGOBS, you might find I didn't search with that, but I assume it's just the same. So RAGOBS system. So that's basically and that basically LLM ops or RAGOBS or DevOps are just all about when you go and deployment. So understand the end-to-end -end technology stack for RAG systems. So when you do this, task one, most of your question will be answered. And it's here you should ask questions, whatever you don't understand, get people in a call, your friends, whatever here, like your colleagues, ask in Slack, you know, really, really understand. Take time today to really understand that, to read and discuss, okay? And every question you should ask it would help you here. After that is basically design and develop prompt generation system, implement test case generation and evaluation, and uh, develop uh, an algorithm or learn about the algorithms that are on prompt testing and re-ranking. There are many, Monte Carlo matchmaking, this is Melat, what earlier you were saying on and, and how you know to generate Monte Carlo generation is uh, one or Monte Carlo testing, a low rating system. You will understand all of this. And there are many others. Uh, you know, this is from machine learning context. And then of course, uh, and if you just develop all of this into a user interface so that you have a backend that develops, you know, that does data generation, automatic prompt generation, as well as also re-ranking and you know have a, a user interface to help you and then basically integrate everything in tests and basically that's it reports uh, it means also reports so here there are going to be tutorials now and later by introduction um, and challenge to prompt engineering and then uh, tomorrow rag components remit techniques to improve retrievers in rag and it's none and then uh, rag evaluation data generation available and understanding of prompt matching and ranking mileage and Thursday would be RAG evaluation metrics, as well as RAG ops, uh, so DevOps of RAG development and production deployment. Okay, and I think really make sure, I think some of you, a few people have been submitting their link as a PDF. We're, that Please don't do that, really. I mean, that's just uh, breaking our system. If it is a link, if you have published it somewhere, either LinkedIn or, you know, another blogging system or Medium, please just put the, the link there. And if you want to submit the content, then put it in a PDF, the content, not the link, and then put it in your Google Drive and then just submit that link, the Google Drive link. And I, I don't, I hope that I will not see uh, a PDF with only a link. I, th I hope that will stop. And just, I think the interim submission is as linked to your GitHub code, uh, whatever you have been working and, and at least a minimum is that you have a well-structured repository that you can start coding with and developing everything and then reports of task one basically your understanding review of task one put it as a report and any other uh, progress you have made also you can you can add it there and then the final submission is basically complete work uh, of your code whatever you manage to do as well as a blog post entry or a pdf uh, for that hopefully that is clear and if it's not clear really just let's talk um in in the slack does that make sense? Uh, how do people feel? Are you excited? Are you, you know, looking forward and all that? Great. I like lots of hands. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Me too. So happy um, coding and happy um, work. Okay. So I will go. Uh, thanks, everyone. We can. Start